Again, we follow divine service setting one. It's found on page 151. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. <coughs> Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. For our intro of this day is found printed inside your bulletin. <coughs> Uh, depart from the standard practice of using the Psalms, and instead today we go through the great O antiphons of Advent. Um, you'll see them in your hymn a little bit later on, right across from uh, uh, the, the, the hymn of the day, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel, because this is the source for that hymn. O wisdom proceeding from the mouth of the Most High, pervading and permeating all creation. Mightily ordering all things. Come and teach us the way of prudence. O Adonai, the ruler of the house of Israel, who appeared to Moses in the burning bush and gave him the law in Sinai, come with an outstretched arm and redeem us. O root of Jesse, standing as an ensign before the peoples, before whom all kings are mute, to whom the nations will do homage. Come quickly to deliver us. O key of David, and scepter of the house of Israel, you open and no one can close. You close and no one can open. Come and rescue the prisoners who are in darkness and shadow of death. O day spring, splendor of light everlasting, come and enlighten those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death. O King of the nations, the ruler they long for, the cornerstone uniting all people. Come and save us all, whom you formed out of clay. O Emmanuel, our King and our Lord, the anointed for the nations and their Savior. Come and save us, O Lord our God. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. <laughs>
Testament reading for the fourth Sunday of Advent is from the 18th chapter of the book of Deuteronomy. The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from your midst, from your brethren. Him you shall hear, according to all you desire of the Lord your God in Horeb, in the day of the assembly, saying, Let me not hear again the voice of the Lord my God, nor let me see this great fire any more, lest I die. And the Lord said to me, What they have spoken is good. I will raise up for them a prophet like you from among their brethren, and will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak to them all that I command him. And it shall be that whoever will not hear my words, which he speaks in my name, I will require of him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our gradual is from Isaiah 45. Rain down, you heavens, from above. And let the skies bring out righteousness. Let the earth open, let them bring forth salvation. And let righteousness spring out together. Our epistle reading is from the fourth chapter of Paul's letter to the Philippians. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to all. The Lord is at hand. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, 
which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise for the reading of the Holy Gospel.
grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text for this fourth Sunday of Advent is our gospel reading in St. John chapter 1. Where John the baptizer says, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness, make straight the way of the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. Malachi, or as I like to call him, the, the Italian prophet Malachi, was the last of the prophets before John. God's people waited 400 years for the man that Malachi had foretold. Twice, God promised that Malachi was not the last. Just before the Messiah, there would be another. In Malachi chapter 3, God said, Behold, I send my messenger, and he will prepare the way before me. And the Lord whom you seek will suddenly come to his temple. And the messenger of the covenant in whom you delight. Behold, he is coming, says the Lord of hosts. Then a second time, in the next chapter, chapter 4, God calls this prophet, whom we know as John, but God calls him by the name Elijah. He said, Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the great and awesome day of the Lord comes. The angel Gabriel also told Zechariah, John's father, in the temple that John would turn many of the children of Israel to the Lord their God. And he would go before him, that is, go before God, the Messiah, in the spirit and power of Elijah. Jesus himself calls Jesus Elijah in Matthew chapter 11. While he was in prison, John sent his disciples to ask Jesus whether he was the coming one or not. He told them, go tell John what you hear and see. The blind receive their sight, the lame walk, lepers are cleansed and the dead are raised up, and the poor have the good news preached to them. Then as the disciples were leaving, Jesus began to praise John. He said that John was not a reed blown in the wind or a man arrayed in soft clothing. John was a prophet and more than a prophet for he was the last of the prophets. He is the greatest of those born of women because all of the law and the prophets, the entire Old Testament, had prophesied until him. He ushered in the Messiah with a fiery call to repentance and an anointing in the Jordan River. And, says Jesus, if you are willing to accept it, he is Elijah who is to come. So why then, when the priests and Levites asked him if he was Elijah, did he say, no. He said no because they did not know really what they were asking. As you'll remember, the prophet Elijah had not suffered a physical death. He had been carried away to heaven by the whirlwind that followed the chariot of fire right in front of the eyes of the next prophet, Elijah. That simple exception from death made Elijah the subject of much speculation in popular Jewish thought, and particularly in thoughts about the end times. The Jewish people always believed that the Messiah would come back, that the, the Messiah would come to them at Passover. And so every time when they celebrate the Passover, they leave one seat open at their dinner table as the seat for Elijah to sit in when he comes right before the Messiah. It's part of the tradition. John was the messenger prophesied by Malachi. 
sent before the Lord to prepare the way for the Christ, the Messiah, the Anointed One, in the spirit and power of Elijah. But he deflects the question and says that he is not Elijah. He does this because he doesn't want to confuse them or get them bogged down in a stupid debate. If he says that he's Elijah, they will understand the wrong thing about it. So don't bother playing their game using their language. The most important thing is that John says that he is not Christ. And he wants above all else to point to the Christ. To confess the Christ who lays down his life as a ransom and atonement for the sins of the world. There are at least two lessons for us here. First, we should be more careful in listening for the question behind the questions. For example, when a teenager casually walks into the kitchen and asks his mother if their car insurance covers, oh, say, stink bomb damage, the mother will want to know more before she answers the question. This is true of all sorts of arenas of thought, but it is particularly true with spiritual topics. That is because spiritual topics are always personal and are always important. Which brings us to the second lesson from John today. He is not the Christ. And he is not interested in talking about much else but the Christ. Not even baptism. Everything that really matters has a spiritual aspect. And everything that has a spiritual aspect shows us that we need a Savior. Even a seemingly trivial thing, such as who a person roots for in the NFL, the National Football League, has a deeper meaning. People root for teams they feel connected to. Their reasons for the connection almost always reasons of community and origin are important. The success or failure of the team is not really all that important, though it might feel like it in the moment. What is important, what drives the team loyalty and the desire to see them succeed is the fans' identity. For example, a person with roots in Wisconsin whose dad was a diehard Packers fan will likely be a Packers fan. Or someone who grew up rooting for the Dodgers in baseball in California will probably still be a fan of the Dodgers, especially when they win the World Series again. <laughs> when people ask who you root for, they really want to tell you who they root for. They want you to know where they are from and who their people are. Those realities have spiritual importance. So also, if a stink bomb has gone off in your minivan, there are some spiritual questions to ask, such as, what is wrong with you? What? were you thinking? And why did you do this? Those, as you'll notice, are all law questions. But they are questions that matter. Questions of importance. Teenage rebellion and lack of self-control arise from, no surprise, original sin and they need to be addressed by the law. Teenagers invariably are looking for love, for attention, even though they don't always realize it. Pretty much every stink bomb that has ever gone off has been foolish attempts, often in a very weird roundabout way, 
to try to impress a girl. So also, where are you from? And who are your people? Are law questions. My dad was a Packers fan, and so am I. Means, at the very least, I am not self-sufficient. I need people. And I'm hoping that we can have some connection. That need to belong. To be from somewhere. To have people. <laughs> to find more people. Arises in part from original sin. Being a Packers fan is more socially acceptable than stink bombs, but it still comes from the same need. By the way, so does being a Buckeyes fan. The teenager and the Packers fan, the man in midlife crisis, and the child throwing a tantrum because he has to eat green beans, the priests and the Levites, they all need the exact same thing. They all need Christ, a Messiah, a Redeemer. Almost none of them ever ask the right questions. Jesus is famous for it. Read through the Gospels. Almost any time someone questions Jesus and asks him a question, Jesus doesn't answer the question that they ask. Jesus answers the question that they should have asked instead. Look for it. You'll see it yourself. But John knows. John knows what they really need. Because it is also what he needs. And he has been sent to proclaim and confess. This is what drove John's question from prison that we heard last week. Are you the coming one or not? In other words, can I be on your team? Do you remember me? Do you love me? Do you want me? Am I yours? Can I tell people that you are mine? Go tell John what you hear and see. Whether he is Elijah or not, whether the Packers win or lose, whether the minivan is ruined forever and insurance won't cover it or not, in any of those circumstances, still the truth that matters is that a Savior has been born in Bethlehem. A man like us, from among us. He has been put to death in Jerusalem for sins he did not commit. And he was risen from the dead with healing in his wings. He comes now to reconcile us to his Father, to bring us to himself. Drop down ye heavens from above, and let the skies pour down righteousness. From our graduate, from the source of the Latin name for this Sunday, Rurate Che, Rurate pour down the heavens. Christ, our King, has banished our fear has outlawed it, has cast it out, has removed our need for anything else but Him. He is our God. He is our Messiah, our anointed one, our promised one. The Holy Trinity and the Holy Angels and all the saints of God from all time, they are our people. Even if the holidays don't feel like holidays, and they're lonely, or the, or the world keeps being 
more and more cruel. Or someone or something that you really cared about and believed in didn't get voted in in the last election. And our country is being destroyed before our eyes in one way or another. Still, John is not the Christ. The way of salvation is not give us someone who will tell us how to fix ourselves. But there is a Christ, our Christ, the real one. And he is not ashamed of us. He is eager to have us. And in him, we do not find what we need to do to be like him, to be acceptable to him. No, in him, we have all that we need. He gives us our new life. And he lives it through us, in us. Like John was trying to tell all those people who were questioning him, it's not about you. It's about Jesus for you. Thanks be to God. Amen. Now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds forever in Christ Jesus. Amen. We continue now on page 159, singing together our offertory, What Shall I Render to the Lord? Please rise.
especially as we pray for our local law enforcement and Shay, Jessica, Mark, Kathy, and Kevin in our sheriff's office. Give earthly peace in our time, even as your gospel gives eternally the peace that passes all understanding. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Grant all women with child and all mothers with infant children increasing happiness in their blessings, especially our dear sister Ruth as she carries her first child. Look with compassion on the lonely, the depressed, and the despairing. Grant healing to the sick and give peace to the anxious and dying. Especially do we pray for Mary, Jim, Patricia, Linda, and their ongoing needs. Mark, Barbara, Tony, Mara, and their afflictions. Everyone struggling with the pandemic and all those we remember now in our hearts. Comfort all who mourn with the certain hope of the resurrection. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father of all blessing, we offer you thanksgiving for the blessings you give to us rejoicing in all your gifts of life, especially Mary, Rhea, and all those celebrating birthdays, as well as all those celebrating anniversaries, and Michael and Jane Donkey, just married yesterday. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Grant that all who receive your Son's holy body and precious blood may do so in repentance and faith, and in the unity of a true confession. Work in us this Christmas a love and desire for your blessed sacrament. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who is the key of David and the scepter of the house of Israel. By his death he has opened the kingdom of heaven and closed the gates of hell for all who trust in him. By his resurrection, he has rescued the prisoners who sat in darkness and in the shadow of death. Grant that as we recall with thanksgiving his advent in the flesh, we may always confess him and remain watchful for his advent in glory at the last day. Through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. We continue now on page 160 with the service of the sacrament. The Lord be with you.
and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to, be our, to bear our sin and be our Savior. With repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all availing sacrifice of his body and his blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood, as he bids us do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth, to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb and his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink of it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. We continue now on page 165 with singing together the note to this, the song of sin. Please rise.
Please be seated. We continue now with singing our closing hymn, number 349, Heart of the Glad Sound, number 349. 